Hey everyone, I'm Jamie Feldman, fashion and lifestyle editor here at the Huffington Post, and this is True You, our brand new show all about celebrating our imperfections and loving ourselves the way we are uh, when, as it relates to fashion and beauty. Uh, so as you can see, I'm in a bathing suit. Uh, swimsuit season is upon us, and I know that the idea of swimsuit, swimsuit shopping and putting on a bathing suit and getting to the beach can be kind of daunting, but I am here to assure you that it can be fun, it's exciting, it's great, summer is too short to waste on uh, feeling insecure, and I'm here to help you with all that stuff and uh, talk to you a little bit about why bathing suit shopping is actually not so bad. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, I myself have had plenty of struggles bathing suit shopping. Um, I've thrown many a tantrum in many a dressing room, and I can tell you from experience that once the time comes where you're going to the beach and you're putting on a bathing suit and you're getting in the water and having fun, those things don't really matter. So I can recall a specific time I was in a TJ Maxx with my mom and we picked out all these great bathing suits and we were so excited and I couldn't wait to try them on and then I got in the dressing room, I put the first one on, the lighting was terrible, I looked at myself and I said, this is awful, I hate bathing suits, I'm never going to the beach, uh, I'm, never, I'm never showing off my body in this bathing suit threw a tangent, threw all the bathing suits on the floor and walked out. A lot of my friends have had similar issues. I'm sure many of you out at home out there have had similar issues. And uh, I have some tips, some personal tips uh, for you so that it can be kind of an enjoyable and fun experience. So what I've learned uh, as I've gotten older and as I've kind of grown up a little bit is that nobody is looking at you at the beach. Let's be real, okay? You're... What, think about what you think about when you're going to the beach. You're thinking about getting in the water. You're thinking about getting a tan. You're thinking about playing volleyball, having fun with your friends, having a soda, maybe having a hot dog, maybe having some ice cream. No one is worried about what you look like at the beach, so you shouldn't be worrying about what anyone else looks at the, like at the beach, and especially not what, what you look at, like at the beach yourself. So a few tips I have for kind of some best practices when you're going to try on bathing suits. The first one is... Go with a group of friends who you love and who you trust. Uh, oftentimes, if we go by ourselves, we kind of get into our own heads and we're worried about how we look and, and if, it's, if, we're, we're, uh, if we really like the way the bathing suit looks and what it is. If you go with a group of friends who you love, who you can trust, who you can count on to lift you up and to kind of give you that extra push like, hey, that looks awesome on you, um, you know, you look great in that color, that can really be helpful. It can, it can make the whole, it can change everything about the experience. Another tip I have that I live by is to buy a bunch of bathing suits or order a bunch of bathing suits online and try them on in the comfort of your own home. I will tell you this right now, lighting in most dressing rooms is super unforgiving, it's super unfriendly, uh, it's hot, it's uncomfortable, you're cramped, you can't lay down, you can't stop to use the bathroom, and there is nothing worse in this life, well, that's not true, but there is nothing worse during a shopping trip than having to use the bathroom and being trapped in a bathing suit or trapped in any kind of item of clothing. So uh, I would suggest picking out ones that you love, going home, dimming the light so you are comfortable in a, in a glowy, beautiful light, trying on as many as you want, and then returning the rest, uh, the ones that you don't like. I have This is tried and true. I've done it millions of times, um, and I guarantee it will be really helpful. Another thing is that, you know, Think, you have to think that regardless, if you're, if you're getting too much in your head about it, then you're, you're going to be unhappy and you're going you're gonna to throw a tantrum about it. As I said before, no one is looking at you at the beach. Everybody's at the beach to have a good time. You're at the beach to have a good time. Summer is so short, it's, it's fleeting almost. Every summer goes by and we say, oh, summer's over. When I was in high school, it was like back to school already. I wasted all of this time sitting at the beach, covered up in a cover-up or in a shirt or in jeans or in something that, that I didn't want to show off my body because I was worried about what other people thought about me. So uh, this new video just came out, actually. It was uh, an advertisement with JCPenney featuring these amazing, amazing women who are the tops of their field. Mary Lambert, she's a singer-songwriter. I'm sure you know her. Um, Gabby Gregg, she's an amazing blogger. Jess Baker, she's an author. She wrote a, uh, an amazing book called Things No One Will Tell Fat Girls. And it was so uh, special and so empowering to me to, to watch this video. And I would suggest everybody, after you watch this, to go ahead and watch this video because um, it, 
it really stayed with me. And there was one quote that Mary Lambert actually said that was, you can't love uh, the body you're going to have without actively loving the person that you are. That's paraphrasing, so don't directly quote me on that. But uh, the sentiment is there. Um, you know, you could say, well, if I lost 20 pounds, I would be so happy on the beach. Or, you know, if I could just lose those final five pounds, like I'd be happy to wear a bathing suit. But losing weight isn't a cure-all. Um, I've learned that in my own life. I've struggled with my weight my whole life. And, um, you know, I wasted a lot of time feeling insecure and being upset about it. And, you know, many often times you'll read it on the internet, you'll hear it from people who've experienced it. Losing weight does not equate to happiness. Um, learning how to love the skin that you're in and learning how to love the body that you've been given is what is going to ultimately make you the most happy. And I know that that's so much easier said than done. And believe me, it's taken me a long time to get there as well. Uh, but there are so we're living in a time now where there are so many amazing people to be following on Instagram and, and Facebook and social media. And so they've they've kind of made it a little bit easier for you. When I was you know when I was growing up. I didn't really have those people to look up to. I didn't have Instagram. I didn't have Snapchat. I didn't have uh, Ashley Graham being on the cover of Sports Illustrated in a bikini, which was so historic and so iconic. I didn't have those people to look up to. Uh, unfortunately, now we do have those people, and it's such an amazing, amazing time to be getting in a bikini and going to the beach. Um, you know, you have celebrities like Amy Schumer who are standing up to people, people in the public eye who, who you know, are vulnerable to getting comments and people making comments and, and talking about their weight and what they look like. And, you know, you have someone like Amy Schumer who's fighting back at those trolls and, and kind of saying, this is my body, this is what I look like, take it or leave it, I really don't care. Um, and that's so powerful. You have people like models like Precious Lee, who, um, you know, she is a plus size model who was in the, had a huge spread in the Sports Illustrated uh, swimsuit issue, in a swimsuit, uh, in, in uh, lingerie for Lane Bryant. And it's just a really great time. And there are so many people that you could be following. You have Lena Dunham, who is like the number one proponent of body positive, uh, of, of positive body image, who's you know, showing off her body on Instagram. She's showing off her body on her television show. She does not give a you-know-what, and it's so empowering, and it's so wonderful to see all these celebrities doing this. You have, again, you have Ashley Graham. Um, I personally have been super inspired by her. She is size 16. She's a model. She's stunning. Okay, I get it. Plus-size models are still models. They're stunning and beautiful and amazing, but they're, but they're, uh, they are larger sizes than we've ever seen before. Um, and so you have this person, you have Ashley Graham, who made history by being on the cover of Sports Illustrated. And now you have, you see her putting on a swimsuit line. And you see people like Nicolette Mason, who's another blogger, who is wearing those swimsuits and posting them on Instagram and, and posting them with hashtags like F your beauty standards and everybody is a bikini body. And that is so important uh, is such an important message for us and for us to all kind of take a nod from and kind of learn and live our lives, uh, you know, inspired by them. Um, and actually, Ashley Graham uh, has a line of bathing suits with uh, a company called Swimsuits for All, which is one of my all-time favorite uh, places to bathing suit shop. This is an Ashley Graham by Swimsuits for All bathing suit. It's a one-piece. It's super cute. Um, they're affordable. They're not too expensive. They run all the way up to size 24. And I actually have a few uh, of her new offerings to show you guys. Um, so the first one is this olive green one-piece. It has a zip, so you can be as modest or not modest as you want. Um, it has these she this sheer paneling, which is super cute and super flattering. Um, you we're seeing a lot of one pieces right now because, um, you know, kind of ba the Baywatch days are back in style. The 90s are, are back in uh, for anyone out there who remembers wearing one pieces in the 90s. And so the high leg is super flattering and the zipper and uh, there's really good support in here uh, for us larger chested women like myself. Um, another one from Ashley's collection, which is super cute, is this uh, one shoulder one piece. Um, so, you know, if you're still not comfortable to wear a two piece, but you want to be, you know, you want to show off a little bit of skin, this one has the mesh paneling. It has a very on trend uh, one shoulder detail. And again, super flattering and super cute. Um, we also have this guy. This is really fun. It's lips. It's super sassy. 
Uh, this is also from Swimsuits for All. It's not uh, one of the Ashley Graham pieces, but there are so many options on the Swimsuits for All website, um, and they have all these patterns. We have one here with flamingos that is super cute that I want to show you guys. If any of you watched us on Snapchat, you might have seen it on my head. Uh, we have a top here and a high-waisted bottom, which I personally love a high-waisted bottom. Super forgiving, super flattering, and if you're not comfortable to wear a one-piece, but you are the kind of person that always has to go to the bathroom, which is me, uh, these are a perfect alternative because it's much easier to go to the bathroom in a two-piece than a one-piece, let's be real. Um, some other websites that I love for bathing suits are ASOS. Um, you might shop on ASOS for your clothes already, but they have such an extensive range. They have sizes all over the map, um, and they're a really good option if you, like me, want to try them out at home. There's also uh, Torrid and Lane Bryant who have really great options for, all, for uh, larger sizes. And then, actually, you might not know this, but J. Crew uh, has bathing suits that go up to a size 16, and their one pieces are universally flattering. I have so many friends that buy them and love them, including myself, including my friends who are all different shapes and sizes, uh, and, and we all just really love them, and, and it's really great. So, you know, that's what it is. I mean, you can, you have two options, right? You can go to the beach and you can sit and you can sit on your chair and hang out by yourself while your friends jump around and splash in the waves and have a great time and get that suntan that everybody wants. I dyed my hair bleach blonde a few weeks ago, well, like a week ago, and my skin is a little too pale to have bleach blonde hair at the moment and I'm certainly not going to let uh, a little insecurity stopped me from getting some bronze skin to match my my new hair. Uh, so you have that option, or you can just look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm enough, I'm beautiful, I'm perfect the way I am, everybody is a bikini body, and get out there and have a great time with your friends. And I'm telling you, I have memories of, of studying abroad. I studied abroad in Italy, and I went to um, the Canary Islands for spring break, and all my friends went, uh, took their tops off and went in the ocean. And I was wearing a one piece and I didn't feel comfortable with my body. And I sat on the towel and I waited for them and I read a book and they were running around laughing and having fun. And they have this memory now that I'm not a part of. And I, that always stayed with me. Um, so I'm not suggesting that you get topless and run into the ocean, but I am suggesting that um, you will look back at this time that you spent feeling sad and feeling insecure and too worried about what other people think about you, you I'm, I'm telling you from personal experience that you will regret it. Um, and you don't, you don't want to look back at those times because, as I said, summers are too short. Once you start working and you have to be at work all summer, you're going to miss that part of your life even more because you'll probably only get to go to the beach a few times a summer. Um, and you... That's not something that I'm happy about, but it's my reality. It's my truth right now. So those times that you do get to get on the beach and you do get to have fun and you get to enjoy the warm weather, uh, there's no point in wasting uh, time being feeling bad about yourself and feeling insecure. Um, if it helps, I know this sounds super cheesy and nobody has to know about it but you and I, uh, but sometimes I will recite affirmations to myself in the mirror if I'm feeling especially down. It's a trick I also learned from Ashley Graham. She has a great TED talk about it, about how she loves her thick thighs and she loves her cellulite and she has to just choose to love it even if she wants to hate it because, uh, you know, if you, if you make a decision that you're going to love something and you're going to change your mind about it and you're going you're gonna, to, um, you know, change the way you feel about it, Sooner or later, it's going to actually come true. Um, that is from personal experience, too. I've struggled a lot with my body image over the years, and what I've learned in my job and writing about these women who are so awesome, you know, preaching these messages of body positivity is that there is no time to feel bad, and every body is a great body. You were given the body that you have for a reason. Being healthy is one thing, but uh, loving the skin you're in is what's going to really make all the difference. So... Those are my words of wisdom. Um, I, I know that it's not perfect, and I, and I hear all the time that these notions are a lot easier said than done. I totally understand that, again, from experience growing up. I, I really struggled with my weight. Um, you know, I had wonderful people in my life who were constantly raising me up and, and telling me how beautiful I was, but 
you know, it's a little different to hear it from your mom or your aunt or your sister or your friend uh, versus actually really feeling it. Um, and I know that that can be especially difficult during this time of year. But, you know, you're, as long as you're surrounding yourself with people who love you and you're, you know, reminding yourself that you're enough and your body is perfect the way it is, uh, I think you're going to have a much, much more fun summer. Um, and you can take those ideals and, and take them with you even long after the summer is, is over. So um, that's my advice. Um, I hope that that is helpful to you guys. I know that, you know, it still might take a little bit more time. But again, what I do personally when I'm feeling down is I look up a hashtag or I scroll through an Instagram feed or, you know, I call a friend. Um, your friends can really be helpful when it comes to making you feel better about something. We can get into our own heads a little bit about um, how, how we feel about our bodies. And, and you know, if we're alone and we're, we're looking at, we're watching television or we're, wa or we're flipping through a magazine and we see all these, you know, bo beach bodies, quote unquote, and that can be super discouraging. But I, I think, I hope, and I think that that notion will, will be something of the past uh, really soon. I think you've, we've seen a lot of people kind of fight back the term beach body. Um, there, was, there were these advertisements a year ago for um, a, a weight loss supplement, and they were all over the subways, and it was super intrusive. People who were just trying to get to work or school or hang out with their friends had to see these giant billboards that said, are you beach body ready? I remember seeing them and just feeling like, wow, this is so, this is, what kind of message is this, is this advertising sending to the people who are just actually trying to get to work or to school or to see their friends? Uh, and you actually had a lot of protesters in the UK who were vandalizing the ads and standing in front of the ads in their bikinis and making a statement about what it means to have a beach body. And that actually ended in, uh, recently the U in the UK, they passed a bill that uh, there can no longer be ads on the subway that uh, promote an unhealthy body image. And I think that we could all learn a little bit from that uh, because there's no one that can tell you whether or not you have a beach body. The only person who can say that is yourself. And it's these advertisements and it's these magazines and it's these people on television who have these seemingly unachievable, unachievable bodies that are being, you know, highlighted as, as what is normal and what is right and what is beautiful. And I know that that can be uh, really detrimental. It's detrimental to me. I mean, I watch the Kardashians just like everybody else. They uh, are champions of body image, but they also are on a television show. And filter out some of the, the real stuff that we've got going on. Uh, and so I think that that's really important to keep in mind too. I know that, um, it's easy to follow someone on Snapchat or follow someone on Instagram and say, well, they look perfect. Of course they don't, they, they're comfortable going to the beach. They have, they have a beach body. Uh, but it's also important to remember that they're getting paid to be in the public eye and, uh, they are not doing it alone. Uh, on the other hand, you have someone again, like Ashley Graham, who a few days ago, posted a shot of her leg and all of her cellulite on her leg. Uh, and the she was riding a bike. She looked so happy, so comfortable in her own skin. And the caption said something like, you know, let's celebrate ourselves. Let's celebrate who we are. A little cellulite never hurt nobody. And it's true. Um, you know, our imperfections, quote unquote, and our flaws and the things that we have that, that we don't think anyone else has is what makes us unique and is what makes us special. Um, and no one else has your body and no one else has your personality and your, what you can bring, uh, to a group of friends or to a beach get together or to a conversation or to anything really. Um, and I think we get really caught up in, um, worrying about our appearance, but we, that, that, so caught up that we don't think about all the other things that we are bringing into somebody's world. Um, so that's another way that I kind of combat my insecurities that creep up because they do creep up. Um, you know, I think about a friend who has said, given me a nice compliment 
or I look back at my Instagram, which I do far too often. It's a little embarrassing, but I'll go back and look at all of the fun times I've had with my friends and all the amazing comments that I've gotten from people I love and likes and, and you know, mentions and, and tweets. I love to look back at tweets and, and, uh, t- and, and look back at all the, conversa- the important conversations I've had with people. And I find that even that small boost um, is enough to make me feel a little bit better. So I think that you know, social media can take over our lives a little bit, but there are amazing things. There are amazing things about social media that um, we all get to experience and we all get to enjoy. And, you know, it seems so trivial, but when I have a lot of likes on a photo, it makes me feel good. And I might be in a bikini and feeling gross. So why don't I look at my uh, mentions from the past two weeks and see, read about something that I said that somebody enjoyed or a joke I told that someone thought was funny or, you know, a photo of, of a friend and I from a really fun time that we had that always helps me, it puts me in a better mood, it puts me in a better place emotionally, which then puts me in a better place physically. Um, so I think, you know, there are a lot of ways to kind of combat this, this dreaded bikini shopping thing. Um, I know that it can, it, again, it can seem really daunting, and it is, and... I can sit here and say it as much as I want, but you could still go into a dressing room with poor lighting and no room to move your arms and you'll have to pee and you might have just had a fountain soda because fountain sodas are amazing and if you're at the mall, you'll probably get to have one and uh, you might forget everything that I've just said, um, but I think you know, if you keep uh, telling yourselves these things, if you keep thinking about them, if you if you start following these kind of body positive role models, if you want to follow me, if you want to tweet at me, if you ever need to talk to me, you are more than welcome to do that. I get thousands of emails a day, so I'm happy to get a few more uh, if you guys want to want to chat it out. And I think um, you know, the sooner you start realizing that you only have so much time at the beach and you only have, you know, you, you're going to have these memories for the rest of your life, then the sooner you can hit the beach, forget about what anyone else is thinking because, again, nobody is thinking about your body at the beach and you can start enjoying your summer. Uh, and I think that you'll be really happy that you did because as soon as I started re- thinking that way and as soon as I, I stopped uh, worrying so much about my body and what other people's other people were thinking about my body, was when I started to have the best memories I have uh, of summer, of being at the beach. I used to hate the beach. I used to, I used to drop my friends off at the beach, go shopping while they were at the beach all day, and come pick them up at 5. Because to me, it was more fun to walk around and shop and walk around in town and, and not worry about anybody seeing me in a bathing suit than to be at the beach. And again, it's kind of like the story I told earlier they would come back with these memories and, you know, a bird pooped on one of them or something, even if it's silly, even if it, if it seems trivial, these are still memories that, uh, you'll be missing out on if you, if you are, you know, if you feel like you can't show off your body or you can't be at the beach or you can't take, partake in, in all the summer fun that you could be having. Um, and once I, I stopped doing that, I, I used to tell people that I just didn't like the beach, that I, would rather do something else, that it wasn't for me, that it wasn't fun for me, that I didn't like the ocean, which is still true. I really don't like the ocean because the ocean is kind of scary. But if you like the ocean, more power to you. Um, And then as soon as I kind of got over this, this, you know, preconceived notion that people cared at all what I looked like at the beach, um, now it's one of my favorite things to do. It's one of my favorite places to go. And so I think over time and uh, with a little self-love and a little um, affirmation, you too. If if you're feeling this way, um, I hope that that these words will help you kind of get out of your own head and and get on the beach and have fun. Uh, so I think we're gonna open it up to some questions. I know that um, we might have had some questions coming in. Yeah, we definitely got some really good ones. Um, hi guys. <laughs> Um, okay, one user just tweeted at us. Um, what are some affordable stores? that you find have great swimsuits other than I guess the ones that you've already mentioned. Yeah. Um, so I cannot preach the, I cannot sing the praises of TJ Maxx and Marshalls enough. They have a huge selection and they are often, um, higher end bathing suits that are, that are marked down. Um, and you can find really great stuff in there. I would advise buying them and trying them out at home first. Uh, Forever 21, surprisingly, uh, they actually have 
a curvy line uh, for swimsuits, and they um, do a really good job of being affordable and also having a great selection, and you can look at those online. Um, ASOS, again, and uh, J. Crew and Old Navy. Old Navy and Gap probably, I would say, are kind of hidden gems when it comes to swimwear. I don't think you automatically think of Old Navy when you think of swimwear, but they do have a ton of great options. They offer a, to- a huge range of sizes, and they are super affordable, and um, they're great, too. Cool. Um, that's awesome. I didn't know Forever 21 had yeah. a swimsuit line. Cool. Well, uh, another question we got, um, are awkward tan lines a consideration when it comes to cutout swimsuits? Should you do it or should you not do it? I personally, here, here's my issue with tan lines. I used to hate tan lines. I used to not want them. And then I kind of felt like, well, it's kind of like a, a, like a temporary tattoo and a memory of your time at the beach, right? So... First of all, you can see how tan you got if you have a tan line. If you don't have a tan line, you don't really know. And we are we are very quick to say that our tan faded or that we don't look tan anymore or that, you know, it's already gone. Uh, and tan lines are a, a great reminder that they're not. Um, you know, I unless you're going to an event where you're going to have to wear something that's uh, strapless, I don't think that uh, tan line cutouts are, are a big deal. I actually think they're kind of fun. Uh, and with all the crazy cool swimsuits that there are out there, um, I kind of feel like that's kind of the point, um, and I think it can be fun if you if you let it be. Another user just tweeted, um, is it true that curvier girls should stick to black swimwear over color? No, definitely not. That is a big no. Um, we showed you this guy. These, this one goes up to a size 24, so if that answers your question, I hope it does. Um, that is That is a rule that should be... It was made to be broken. Um, curvy girls, thin girls, girls all over the map, wear whatever you want. Again, that's the message that we're spreading here is that it doesn't matter what size you are. You need to wear what makes you feel good and what you feel comfortable in. Um, you know, there is no one who can dictate what you should and should not be wearing on the beach and, uh, and or otherwise uh, besides yourself. So, no, that is not true. Wear whatever you want. I have a neon printed crazy bikini that I'm obsessed with. looks really good with a tan. I think it's going to look good with my new bleach blonde hair. We'll see. Okay, one last question. Um, where are stores where you can find swimmer with good underwire bra support? Totally. For heavier chested girls. So I am one of those girls, and I've struggled with that uh, as well my whole life. Um, Miracle Suit is a really great brand that um, has kind of modernized a little bit, um, and it makes really cool options in one piece is in two pieces and they're super flattering and they're they're really great for um you know us larger chested women swimsuits for all also uh does a really good job with underwiring and cups and and keeping all that stuff i will say victoria's secret is no longer coming out with swimwear however if there's any left it's on huge sale um like 75 percent off something crazy and since they are a lingerie brand they do a really good job of uh, making supportive tops so i would uh, run not walk to your nearest victoria's or your victoria victoria's secret store and see if there's anything left for the taking and if there is then to just swoop it up and figure it out later <laughs> cool awesome <laughs> yeah. but yeah i mean i hope that i hope that that's helpful i mean bathing suit shopping is always, I I hope, I hope that one day bathing suit shopping will not be equated with terror and, uh, you know, nightmarish situations. And I hope that, you know, as we, we kind of move as a society toward a different, healthier standard of what beauty is and what bodies should and should not look like. Um, I think that we've seen that a lot recently. We've seen, you know, um, you have someone like American Eagle, who features unretouched models of all different shapes and sizes in their shoots. Um, you know, you have plus size models on the runway. You have plus size models in editorials. You have them in ad campaigns, and you're finally getting to see something other than what has been the standard of beauty for all of these years. I mean, the same the same can be said uh, for things that are nude. Um, you know, the, a tan nude is not the nude for all different skin colors, and yet for a long time we've equated the word nude with 
just one color. Um, and you're seeing a lot of, of brands kind of move away from that now. You have um, f fancy schmancy Louboutins that are in a whole different range of, of shades. Now you have companies who are making lingerie and undergarments in a, all different uh, shades now. Um, and I think that that is, really speaks to how far we've come as a society and, how, and the kind of the direction we're moving in which is great and really exciting. Um, you know, we are lucky that we, that we have these people to kind of look to and uh, look up to, to, um, you know, move the conversation forward. Every, it seems like every other day there's a new, you know, there's a new story about a plus size model being featured in a campaign, or there's a new um, fashion label that's decided that they're going to extend their, their ranges. I think, um, you know, it's, 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 it's slow going, and um, we have to just kind of keep fighting the good fight for it. But we're lucky that we have these body positive champions in our world that, you know, are kind of taking a stand and, and saying, hey, we don't look like this. We're not a size two. We're not a size zero. Um, I'll tell you a funny story. I'm obsessed with fashion. I always have been. But I've never been a size two. Um, and I started a blog a long time ago called The Real Girl Project which stemmed out of frustration for the people I was seeing, fashion bloggers that I was seeing dominating the internet at the time. So I wrote a not-so-nice email, which I would not advise doing, but it was kind of therapeutic for me, um, to a very successful fashion blogger about all my grievances and what I didn't like about the messages she was putting out there and how it made me feel and, you know, how as a woman who doesn't have the money to buy Louboutins and doesn't, at the, didn't think at the time, quote unquote, had the body to run around the streets in a, bath, in a bikini, um, how her content was making me feel. And I didn't think I was ever going to hear from her again. I kind of put it out into the universe, which I would suggest doing. If, you, if you're feeling something strongly, write it down, get rid of it, throw it out. Um, and about a week later, she emailed me back. And I was shocked because... I never thought I would hear from her. And she wrote me this whole long thing about how she struggled with body image her whole life. And, you know, she um, got made fun of as a kid and she understands where I'm coming from. And at the end of that email, she said, how about instead of complaining to me, you start your own blog? And I was like, oh, whoa, I never thought of that. Why didn't I think of that sooner? And so I started this blog, Real Girl Project, and it was my 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 uh, feelings about the word real have have certainly changed over time. Every body is a real body, no matter what you look like. Um, celebrities have real bodies because they're real humans. Uh, we have real bodies because we're real people. And um, but that was the name that kind of stuck at the time. And it was about uh, women of all different shapes and sizes, with all different budgets, wearing clothes that made them feel good, and the clothes that we were seeing in fashion editorials to kind of show that. Anything that you see in a magazine, anything that you see on television, anything that you see anywhere, uh, it's possible for anybody who doesn't matter what size you are to wear it. Um, and so that blog is actually what got me my job here at the Huffington Post. So I'm not saying that having positive body image will get you employed at a super cool place, but it might. And if nothing else, uh, you will feel good that you've got it out there and you're becoming part of the conversation. So um, that's that's where my journey to, you know, finding self-love and finding self-acceptance really started. And I think that it's been super instrumental in, in how I've lived my life and how I've, you know, approached my work and, and you know, dating and, and boys and, and friends and relationships and my family. And, you know, um, it's been really helpful for me to kind of get it down in writing and, and put it out there. So again, if you are feeling a certain kind of way about things you're seeing on the internet or the things you're seeing in TV or in movies or, you know, pretty much anywhere, the beautiful thing about, you know, being able to be on the internet is that you have access to tweet at someone. You have access to comment on someone's Instagram. We've never been more connected to the people who are influencing us and the people who, you know, we're following to dictate what is cool and what isn't cool and what's in and what's out. And so um, I think that's that's really instrumental in, in having our voices heard. And if nothing else, writing down, hey, you know what? I feel kind of crappy today. Um, you know, I went bathing suit shopping with my mom, and my mom is so great, but she thinks everything looks good on me because she has to say that. She's my mom. I've been there. And, uh, you know, 
getting it out there and, and kind of looking back at it can be therapeutic and, and really helpful. So that's about all the time we have. I really hope that uh, my tips and my stories and, and these awesome bathing suits are helpful to you. Um, thank you so much for tuning in to this new show that we have, uh, which was produced in association with Tumblr. We hope you'll join us again, and happy swimsuit season.